Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to do a simple guide on Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG. It's an incredibly powerful technique that enhances the capabilities of LLMs by combining their generative power with the ability to access and retrieve information from external knowledge sources. So this approach allows LLMs to generate more accurate, factual, and contextually relevant responses, really making them suitable for just a huge range of applications, including answering questions, um, text summarization, and sort of what I'm going to show you today, which is like if you've got a, a big database of data, how you can ask questions about it. Now, what is it and why is it useful? Well, large language models like GPT-3, 4, DeepSeq V3, stuff like that, Llama, they just have this incredible ability to generate human quality text. But their limitation is when it comes to accessing and utilizing real-time information or really specific knowledge that's not in their training data. And this is really where RAG comes in. So RAG systems address this by incorporating a retrieval component that can access external knowledge sources, such as documents, databases, or APIs. So when a user submits a query, the RAG system will first retrieve relevant information from those sources and then provide it to the LLM as context. This enables the LLM to generate responses that are kind of grounded in factual information and tailored to the specific query. So if we look at this diagram that I have up on screen here, you can see that what you're doing is you have this retrieval step where, you know, maybe you're using LangChain, uh, for example. I'm not going to be using LangChain in this one. I'm going to be showing you a way to do it a little bit simpler without having to get into code. And this is really the getting started guide to using RAG locally. And then you will have an embedding model. That model uh, will actually process your your documents that you're uploading or that you're putting in and that will ultimately be stored. These document embeddings will be stored in a vector database. I'll also show you today kind of how to set up a vector database very simply. I do have versions where I actually run it in a more complex way with code and stuff, but this is just going to be, again, getting started so you can kind of like get into the get into understanding what RAG is and how powerful it actually is. And then ultimately, the LLM is prompted with like additional context, which just makes it absolutely incredible. So the experiment that I wanted to run is, um, I've always been a big fan of Magic the Gathering. I don't play much anymore, but I used to play and I've got a pretty big collection of it. And one of the things that I thought about is like, could you use retrieval augmented generation to basically be able to look for cards from the huge amount of cards that exist in the Magic the Gathering world. Now, my, you know, I, I think I could find, I think I could tune this to a way where I could actually do it based on standard and vintage and modern and all the different formats. I have not done that in this example, but I will kind of tell you some gotchas and things that I ran into just simply with, um, with the way this is actually working. So ultimately what I ended up doing is I ended up downloading a couple files here, in particular the all printing CSV file. And then what I had to do is I had to take a Python script and then break that up into a bunch of individual files. So what that actually looks like in my, in my uh, folder here, the split out descriptions, it's a bunch of 24, 25 kilobyte files. I think I could have made them larger but there's a few things that I've learned. Um, processing CSVs can work, but it's not great. Uh, processing JSON can work, but again, it's not great. They really seem to perform better when you give it like natural language. So what I've done is I've actually taken this formatted data and I've actually put them into like individual paragraphs. And you can see some of them are repeated because they were like multiple printing. So I didn't do any of like the data cleanup that you would typically want to do in this. Like I wouldn't typically want uh, duplicates. I would want to somehow have that data, you know, a little bit more uh, clean there. But anyway, it, it's working very well. So when I first went and tried to upload or embed the entire, uh, so I basically processed it like this, but I had a single file. 
and it was called card description and it was just this massive uh, massive text file I could not get the embedder to actually complete it kept failing um, and then as I started like lowering the size of each file it started working a lot better so there's clear limits on the size of files that it can generate but it's super easy to split out files and make it into smaller bite-sized pieces so to get started here I'm gonna start with LM studio LM studio is honestly one of the easiest to use applications for getting started with um, LLMs in general, especially running locally. I have two models here. I have the Mistral Nemo Instruct 2407, and then I have the text embedding Gnomic Embed Text V1.5. That's a mouthful. That is my embedding model. So I'm going to be using my text embedding Gnomic Embed Text V1.5 as my embedding model, and Mistral Nemo Instruct 2407 as my um, like my LLM that I'm running. Now there is cloud-based one, so OpenAI has an um, ADA uh, embedder that you can use. Drop in an OpenAI token or um, API key, and then you're able to hit that directly from what I'm about to show you. So if you have this part set up, the next thing you want to do is download another free application, which I actually adore anything LLM. But one of the things I'll say about anything LLM, it can be a little bit overwhelming. Even though it's simple to lay out, it's, it's very difficult to try to get things to work the way you want them to. And it's because there's just a lot of options. So if you go into settings here, you can see I've got it set up to point to my LM Studio. I've picked my Mistral Nemo Instruct 2407. I've got my Max Token cranked a little bit so when it launches the model, it's just got a little bit more to work with. And then that's all to fill out for me. So I've configured it now, so when I go and I use it, it's going to use Mistral Nemo Instruct 2407. And then I have my vector database. I am, just for the sake of like setting this up simple, I am going to be just using this Lance DB one. You configure nothing. Like it works fairly well, honestly. But some of the ones I've actually configured is like Chroma. Chroma is an open source one that I run locally and then I'm able to connect to it um, via via some API stuff that, that it actually has you fill in. But there are a lot of other ones on here too that I haven't messed with. Um, I've heard people talk about Qdrant and then Pinecone, but I've never I never actually played around with any of those other than, than Chroma, really, and then LanceDB. I probably will give that a go at some point. But anyway, for the simplest version, let's do LanceDB. Then we're gonna go into the embedder. Again, we're running this locally, but I will show you a couple options here. So here, I have actually ran OpenAI before, so you can see that I'm using the text embedding ADA002. This is one I actually really like a lot, but anything LLM embedder is also like a built-in one that you can utilize. Very easy to use. You don't have to change anything, and it works. Like, I've had it work just fine. And then the LM Studio one is the one that we're currently going to be using. Because I want to control the model, and I've tested a bunch of different embedding models to see how they work. And then you can also play around with like the text splitting and chunk uh, preferences, and or you can just kind of leave that at the defaults there. All right, so what I'm going to do is I actually created a new workspace called Rag MTG Test Two. I'm going to go in here, and I'm just going to go ahead and select all the documents. And then I'm going to unselect the ones that I don't want. So I do not want card description, I do not want borderland.txt. And then I'm pretty sure all the other ones are correct. I'm just going to have to scroll way down, unfortunately, to go through and, and get to the bottom. Because I, I think it ended up with like a thousand of these individual um, files. So we're in the 900s now, so that's good. Yep, so I don't have books selected. I'm going to move that. Oh, I don't want this one. I'm going to move that workspace. You can actually organize them. But I find this part to actually be a little bit tedious to actually get them in a folder properly. So then what you what you would do at this point is you would uh, hit save and embed. And we're going to like let that run here for a few seconds. And I'll fast forward it and then kind of show you the output of like when this comes back. and give you an update on the time as well. Okay, so as you can see here, that finished. That only took a couple minutes to actually complete there. Um, it was actually a lot quicker, I think because it may have already been cached, because I think the first time it took a little bit longer. 
So now let's do a test here. All right, so now that that's done, um, what I'm gonna do is just see how well it's performing. I'm gonna warn you, it won't be perfect because I'm asking it context about something that it may, may have done for. So here, for example, it gave me symbiotic beast, which is very interesting. Um, it gave me one. So let me try another question here. So I'm gonna try asking it, give me a list of 10 cards. Cool, so this one actually seems a little bit better. Uh, they get, they actually broke Path to Exile, which is a card I really used to play a lot in Swords to Plowshare. And Sorcery, Kiss Drop, uh, Wrath of God, I mean. So this actually found 10 cards that use white mana. And uh, let me try something else with this one. Give me a list of cards that draw cards. Let me see if it can come up with... Uh, yeah, so it's actually finding some cards here. It tells you the set. It is telling you Jason Erasure. Let's see where the citations come from. You can see the individual files it came from. Now, one of the things I also wanted to test, it, test was like, can it actually build me a deck? Um, make sure to balance the mana curve. I don't know if it's gonna even know what this is yet with this, this particular simple one. Um, Oh, so here it goes. So we're going to do 24 creatures. This one's going to be one blue mana. And we're going to have Plax Manta, Tamar Saber, Saber Tooth, Risen Reef, Mystic Tutor. We have eight enchantments. It's kind of an interesting choice. And then, um, so we're going to have apparently 32 instant and sorceries. What? Okay, cool. Uh, maybe they mean that, like, in combination of, like, enchantment. I think this is just confused about that. Because this is, like, 32 here. And then we would adapt some suggestion. But it's it's actually pretty interesting. Um, so if I were to go to ask it something about, let's say, this particular card, I would say something, because it, it actually starts getting better. This is my theory and what I've seen in the past. Can you tell me what all does so what this will actually do is because it's looking for that particular wording it's a lot better at picking it up so here it found it's a green uncommon enchantment aura that costs 1g which is one green mana when it enters the battlefield you choose a color it enchants the forest like that is amazing um, so if you have a question about a card so can you tell me can you tell me about Wrath of God. That's another card that I used to play out. And then I'll ask it one more. Absolutely perfect. That is a card I know. Um, how about... Or tell me about Birds of Paradise. I'm assuming that... Is, yeah, perfect. So you can kind of see the limitations of this just by watching kind of what it's good at, what it's not. Like the first question we asked up here, it did a very poor job of answering... Um, and then as we got further down, we were able to get like better data out of it. But if you're asking about a particular card, it does such a good job at like going and finding that and returning it to you. Um, so if you were to do something like, tell me all creatures, tell me some creatures that have power, toughness, 4-4. Because I'm using the keyword power toughness, my theory is that what we'll be able to get is better answers. And you noticed up above, and we are, above when I asked the question initially, it was not so clear because I said 4-4 four, four stats. And I did that on purpose to kind of show you the weakness of where Rag can kind of fall down. And what this ended up doing is it found me four, four, four creatures. It found me an affectionate Endric and a volcanic dragon and put me some information about that. And I bet you, let me see if I can do this. Can you uh, tell me three more? Let me see if it keeps the context. Yep, so it actually grabbed it, and it grabbed me three more. Um, that's super cool. I remember playing this card. And it gives you the citations of it. Anyway, this is uh, something that's incredibly powerful. But again, it can be very limiting if you don't understand exactly how to kind of prompt 
via the rag system or actually get it to engage with you. So anyway, I hopefully this video has been helpful. I am a big fan of retrieval augmented generation and ultimately I'm a big fan of running it all locally just purely because I can customize the heck out of it. It's private and secure. I'm not worried about like some cloud-based solution, but I will say the local stuff does fall short at times. So you did see that I do use like the open AI embedder and I, ha I will actually hook into um, other models like an open AI model or something for actually running more advanced things when I need to do uh, retrieval augmented generation. All right, that is it for today. Let me know if you have any questions. This is really just a getting started, a beginner's guide. If you're interested in seeing things about other types of vector DBs, how they are actually set up, how they're ran, let me know. I enjoy working on that stuff as well. But until next time, I uh, hope you guys have a great day and peace out.